welcome to Dialogues with Kim. I'm your host, Kim Harris. And today, <laughs> we're going to be talking about health and fitness. And our expert is going to share with us some dynamic uh, information to help you attain the optimum health that you deserve. But before we get started, of course, we always begin with today's Kimism. And it couldn't be more appropriate. Today's Kimism is, the only thing you have to do in life is inhale and exhale. Everything else is a benefit of living. So while you ponder that, we're going to take a brief break. And when we come back, I'll introduce our guests. We'll be right back. How does your advertisement dollars measure up? Is your business experiencing growth? Dialogues with Kim on air ads reach millions of households with each show. This means increased profits for your business. The world is your customer when you advertise on Dialogues with Kim. Become an ad sponsor today. Welcome back. I am so excited today. Um, <laughs> you're going to get to see a side of me that you've never seen before. But our guest today is going to help us to understand uh, how to stay fit in the most precarious of situations. Her name is Ellen Miller, and she's the author of Planes, Trains, and Exercise, Your Fitness Guide to Travel. Ellen, thank you for joining us today. I am so excited because you have got your little bag of tricks with you, and you're going to make me your guinea pig. Of so course. That's okay. I can handle it. I can handle it. Uh, give us an idea of what ISO breathing is and why and how you got started in this. ISO breathing is actually known as the kindergarten of fitness. Everybody needs a starting place. And after training for many, many years, I decided to go back to basics. And to me, going back to basics is isometric exercise and slow, deep, rhythmic breathing. Because when most people exercise, they tend to hold their breath. Ah, OK. And so in, in, in doing that, I mean, give us an idea of what that means. What is iso breathing? What is that? It's a combination of isometric exercises and the breathing technique is actually added in. Mm -hmm. So holding an isometric pose, mm -hmm. what happens is the longer you hold an isometric, the muscle is contracted. Okay. The longer you hold it, the more intensely the muscle will end up working. Okay. And most people tend to hold their breath when they're holding a contraction on the muscle. So I incorporated the breathing so you're either inhaling and exhaling for X amount of breaths mm -hmm. during that contraction. Okay. So usually a person will get into a contraction and hold it for about five iso breathing breaths, which is equivalent to about 30 seconds. Oh. And that can end up becoming quite intense. Okay, okay. Now you told me uh, when we were in the green room that this was a no sweat <laughs> exercise. I love the no sweat <laughs> exercise. It's just, yeah. Okay, give me, a, uh, give me a demonstration a little bit of what, what that means uh, um, to no sweat. I, I mean, I can't even fathom not sweating when exercising, but help me understand that. The program is low-keyed. You're sitting in a chair. You can do your program. Okay. So very simple. Sit up nice and tall in your chair. Feet are, well, feet okay. should be flat on the floor. Feet should be flat on the floor. Now, extend your hands out and place them on top of your knees. Okay. Keep your neck nice and relaxed. Okay. Shoulders are relaxed. Mm -hmm. And now push down. Push down hard. Do you feel those muscles of the abdominals engaging? Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. So simple. I'm... Now, what would you would do is some slow, deep breaths. Mm -hmm. And again, the longer you hold the breath, the longer you hold the isometric pose, okay. the contraction of the muscle, the more intensely it's going to work. Okay. So again, you need to keep the neck and shoulders nice and relaxed and concentrate on just those abdominal muscles. Okay. And again, five slow, deep inhales and exhales, about 30 seconds worth, mm -hmm. and those muscles will feel like they've really worked. And then just relax. Okay. And then right back into it again and hold it. Okay, so, I mean, this it's, is something I can do anywhere, anywhere. anytime. Okay. Absolutely. You don't, ne not everybody's meant to belong to a gym. <laughs> so that's where I come in. Hello. <laughs> that so, would be me. So far on, I am so far out on the left side of the road there. <laughs> um, I design all my programs keeping my clients in mind. Okay. My clients in general are mostly women. 
morbidly obese, mm -hmm. uh, you have those that have physical limitations, and patients on chemotherapy. Okay. And so they need a low-key program, they want to work muscle, they want to exercise, they want to get fit mm -hmm. and become healthy. Okay, okay. And so this is the starting point. As time goes on, they are definitely going to need some exercise that is more intense and my program is your starting point. I see. So okay. the snippets that I place on YouTube are all low-keyed beginner exercises. Okay, so you can go to YouTube and look up ISO breathing, I-S-O-B-R-E-A-T-H-I-N-G, all one word, and look at those clips and get some ideas of what this exercise does. Now, you said travel. You, during people's traveling, you know, that's one of the excuses they have for not exercising. What are some of the ways that people can exercise doing traveling? Well, everybody has very good intentions of exercising, whether they're traveling for vacation or for business. Mm -hmm. And if it's for business, you're gone two or three days mostly. And you have the good intention of going to the gym at the hotel, Okay. But you start with early morning meetings. Mm -hmm. Meetings run throughout the day. You have lunchtime meetings, meetings throughout the afternoon, dinner meetings. And by the time you get back to your room, you're exhausted. Right. So there <laughs> are three <laughs> basics that you can do in your hotel room that will give you a full body workout. Really? Yes. Okay, help The me. magic three. The magic three. The first one is push-ups. And people go, what uh. is a push-up? Well, for those that don't have upper body strength, you can actually do a push-up off the wall. Okay. So if you're standing literally shoulder distance from the wall, mm -hmm. hands are shoulder distance apart, mm -hmm. feet are hip distance apart, all you're going to do is lower your body down toward, so chest comes toward the wall, and extend back. If you're finding that too easy, bring your feet together first. I told you, mm -hmm. this is basic kindergarten stuff. And with your feet together, that increases the intensity. The next step is to then take a step back from the wall. Okay. And again, feet are apart, and if you can easily do those repetitions, place the feet together. If you're able to do 15 to 20 of those and you find that's easy, then I encourage people to get down onto the floor, onto their hands and knees, mm. and do push-ups on their hands and knees. Okay. Once they're able to accomplish 15 to 20 comfortable repetitions on their hands and knees, then it's time to get up on those hands and toes and whip out those push-ups. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So again, low-keyed. Squats. Squats work the entire lower body. But you don't have to do a low squat in order to work muscle. So, okay. I'm, come, I'm going to demonstrate. You're going to uh, participate. Let's go. Participate? Oh, absolutely. Oh, gosh. Okay. Can I? Do, okay. Okay. Of course you can. Okay. Let's now we're in heels. You should do this yeah. without shoes with, on. <laughs> not in diva gear. Okay. <laughs> okay. So stand with your feet comfortable hip distance. Okay. And all you're going to do is keep the rib cage elevated. Okay. Hands are on your upper thighs right here, a little bit lower down. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. You're going to extend your backside out back slightly so your pinkies come and touch your upper thigh. That's as far down as you need to go. That's, really? This is your starting point. Okay. So your backside is out back. Front Chest of the upper out, body is, right. and head is in a neutral position. Okay. And slowly through the heel of your feet, start to push the body upright. Okay. You should feel the hamstring, back of the upper thigh, and your backside working. And I did. Good. Okay. okay. So again, 10, 15, 20 repetitions of just low keyed squats. Now, you said this was a no sweat. I don't understand how I'm not going to sweat doing that if I've not been in physical condition. I mean, but you're only doing 10 to 15 repetitions. Okay. So okay. under these hot lights, yeah, yeah. you're going to feel it a little bit. <laughs> but otherwise, if you're in an air conditioned hotel room, mm -hmm. you're really not going to sweat. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to take a brief break. And when we come back, Ellen is going to demonstrate <laughs> what you can do while you're standing in line at the airport <laughs> waiting for uh, to load your plane. We'll be right back. Want to make excellent. good on your advertising I... dollars? Sponsor Dialogues with Kim by visiting www.kimdialogues.com and clicking the sponsors link. Okay, welcome back. We are talking with Ellen Miller, the creator of ISO Breathing, and uh, we're learning some very interesting exercises that we call no sweat exercise workout uh, to keep our 
body's in shape, get, in, get physically fit, and um, create some stamina, right? Of course. Okay, so you mentioned in your book here, this is why you wrote the book, for travelers. Yes. Uh, people that travel, and today's busy business person, woman, man, uh, travels quite a bit. And yes. so give us a little bit of an idea of some of the things that they can do while they're out there traveling around the world and stay in I, shape. I just happen to have my handy dandy suitcase. Is that the handy dandy suitcase? Handy dandy <laughs> suitcase. This I actually brought with me when I had traveled to Europe. Okay. And there were times when we really needed to wait online. And I am not a person to stand still, so I needed to do something. Okay. So if I'm standing there with my hands on top of my suitcase, can you tell what I'm doing? Standing I'm, there with your hands on top of the suitcase. I'm working abdominal muscle right now. Okay. My hands are on top, and I'm pushing down. Shoulders and neck are totally relaxed. Huh. So I am engaging my abdominals. Okay. Now, again, the way I designed this program, nobody knows what you're doing, and that's what I love about this program. So if I'm, again, standing in line with palm underneath the handle and one hand on top, mm -hmm. elbows are tucked in, can you tell what I'm doing? No. I'm working my bicep muscle. Wow. I am pushing down on the handle. Most of the suitcases, the handles adjust very easily. Mm -hmm. So with one hand underneath pull it, pushing up, mm -hmm. I'm engaging front of the upper arm or bicep muscle. Okay. And the other hand is pushing down just so that it's there. It's there for support. Okay. And then all you have to do is just switch hands. And again, I was in an airport in, oh gosh, uh, coming home and we had an hour and a half wait in line oh. because we had to go through customs. What else are you going to do besides just stand there online and go, oh, I can't believe this is taking so long. Right. Might as well get your workout in. Yeah, it makes sense to me. So come, you need to try <laughs> oh, this one. Oh gosh, I gotta try that one too, uh, huh? <laughs> well, what I want you to do is you're just gonna stand. Okay. You're gonna elevate one leg slightly and you're going to just push into the suitcase gently. Okay. Okay, that's all I'm gonna so do. So again, you're at the airport. Oh, this luggage matches your outfit. Oh. Okay, now. Yes, it does. <laughs> so you're standing, hold on to the suitcase. Okay. Rib cage is elevated. Uh huh. And just, your knee is not straight, foot is flat with the ground, yeah. and just push gently in toward the suitcase. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you feel quadricep yes, muscle? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get any easier than that. No, it doesn't. So the entire book is geared toward those that have carry on luggage mm -hmm. so that you can wait for the plane do some exercise, or while you're on the plane, come have a seat. I'm going to okay. show you a couple. Uh-oh. <laughs> now, okay, there are some people out there that don't travel. Well, for those that don't travel... But shopping, you said shopping. Oh, my and... shopping, my multitasking book. I actually wrote um, an article for Costco, okay. big box store. And the title was, Can Costco Become Your Next Gym? <laughs> I had gone to Costco, and most of the time I wear a pedometer. Because okay. I like to just make sure I'm getting my minimum of 10,000 steps a day. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk after. <laughs> yeah. So I'm wearing the pedometer, and from the parking area mm -hmm. into the store. Now, if you walk up and down every single aisle in any of the big box stores, you can walk over a mile. Easy. Okay. Okay, a mile is good. So while you're actually pushing the cart, mm -hmm. now you should never be hunched over. Ribcage should always be elevated and let your arms do all the work. Mm -hmm. So as you're turning a corner, you're holding on to the cart with one hand mm -hmm. and you're pushing with the other. Okay. Feel how that waist yes. comes in? Yes. That's how you turn to go around an aisle. Okay. So you can actually work your waist. Don't waste your time just running and shopping make your body work for it. Wow. And I actually had designed in my multitasking book a full body workout with a grocery cart. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so while you're standing and waiting, you know, you go to Walmart, who doesn't go to Walmart, and you're standing on these extended lines until you get up to the cash register, mm -hmm. what do you do besides stand there? Right. So you can get a full body workout using a grocery cart. Hmm. Again, well, and you, left when, field. when you think about it, and you really don't think about it, but when you think about it, 
uh, you're putting more and more groceries in the ba in the basket. It's increasing the weight. So Increases as you're intensity, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so as you're doing your walking through the aisles, you're actually doing more work. Yes. Than you even than you're even aware of. Absolutely. And in the heat of the summer, I encourage yeah. people to go into these larger box stores mm -hmm. and just grab a cart and walk up and down every single aisle. The bottom line is what did you accomplish at the end of the day, mm -hmm. especially if you're looking to lose weight, get stronger, lead a healthier lifestyle. Right. What did you do at the end of the day? So in this heat, it's way too hot, especially here in Dallas with triple digits, right. to go outside midday and walk. Absolutely. But if you go into one of the larger box stores, push a cart, walk up and down every single aisle, and it doesn't have to be huffing and puffing. It, when you're sitting, heart rate is at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And when you get up and walk and push a cart, heart rate increases. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked uh, earlier about uh, segmenting our workouts. And Absolutely. You, and Okay, so we're, we're talking about maybe doing 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the afternoon, and 10 minutes in the evening, getting a full 30 minutes that day. My argument was, how can you, um, how can you see results with segmenting? And your answer to that was? Well, in volume one <laughs> of my DVD series, <laughs> I actually have everything broken down into three-minute segments. Because it was back in early 2000 when a lot of people didn't have cable. They were still watching regular TV. Right. Advertisements were about three minutes long. So I encouraged people every single advertisement that comes on mm -hmm. to do a different exercise. Hmm. So but by the time you get down an exercise and a stretch, mm -hmm. the three minutes are up. And then you watch your show. And then when the next round of advertisement comes on, you do your next exercise. Hmm. You don't have to do everything at once. Those that are very busy, and I fall into that category, I have a lot of meetings that start at between 7 and 7.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And yes, I do get up early in the morning so I can do my 10 minute of exercise. Right. And then later in the day, if I'm home early, I'll put in another 5 to 10 minutes. And it doesn't have to be anything heavy duty or strenuous. Mm -hmm. The program is low keyed. It's meant to be low keyed. Volume 1, everybody that has done it, mm -hmm has lost both weight and inches starting with their very first week. Well, because, you know, when we were speaking, we were talking about consistency yes. being key. Yes, absolutely. And, and we're talking also uh, about um, just uh, making the commitment. You yes. know, con c the commitment and the consistency is what brings the results. And I, I, I see you're <laughs> smiling over it. I agree with you 100%. I mean, uh, it's just making the commitment and then being consistent. And Absolutely. then understanding with something as simple as this, something as simple as this, and something that you're probably already doing and just unaware of, um, it should be easy to see some results, right? Absolutely. Again, it is the consistency, but you also need the magic three. Okay. That consists of healthier, smarter choices with your nutrition. Mm -hmm. That consists of some form of strength training. Okay. Now you scare me because, you know, like, um, I'm a strength, strength training phobe. I don't like muscle you fatigue. You don't have to go that far, and I'm going to show you in just a second. Anaerobic activity, okay. which, again, we just talked a little bit about aerobics increasing heart rate and mm -hmm. low-keyed walking. It does work. It okay. takes a little longer than somebody who's running right. five miles a day. But, again, a slow weight loss system will last you a lifetime, but I do have something for you. Okay. Being you hate strength training. Oh, yeah. I just happen to have, which this is my little section in my bag where I keep my thing for my ponytail, <laughs> and my exercise band. Oh, okay. This band is equivalent to 15 pounds worth of resistance. Really? So nice and easy. Put really? Put both hands through, okay. thumbs up. Uh-huh. Take one palm down and place it on your thigh. Okay. You got it. Other Palm is up toward the ceiling. Okay. Gentle lift, hold. Wow. Don't even go that high. Oh. If your hand is shaking, it's too much. Oh. And just hold it. You're now working bicep muscle. Wow. You should feel it working. And I do. This is great. <laughs> I love 
this. I love this because I'm, I'm <laughs> I want to stay in shape or to the best of my ability. And I don't, but I don't want to commit to a contract at a gym or Absolutely. I'm not going. I've been there, done that. And so I just need something that I can just do when I'm not thinking about doing this it. This weighs one ounce, will fit in your back pocket, fit in a suitcase, yeah. in your purse. This is great. Attaché case for you guys. I mean, right. it works. Okay. It, okay. And part of the multitasking book, mm -hmm. we actually have this around your ankle. So while brushing your teeth first thing in the morning, why not work your legs? Wow. You could work hamstring, quadricep, front of the upper thigh, back of the upper thigh, inner thigh, outer thigh, all with this little band. Excellent. And yes, within three weeks, you will see results. Wow. Not just feel a tightening in the muscle, but I in the uh, Volume 1 DVD, we actually do have a measuring tape. So before anybody starts the program, I encourage them and show exactly where they need to take measurements, mm -hmm. and then at the end of their first week mm -hmm. to take measurements, and then in a month. So you can compare the difference. Okay. And I've had clients in the first week lose anywhere from three inches up to 15. Wow. And in one month's time, I had somebody had taken off 38 inches. Wow. That is more than a yardstick. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just happen to have with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that yardstick, that measuring tape. Always, thing. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ellen, it's been fun. But what I would love for you to do right now is tell our audience where they can contact you, look you up, find more uh, about you and ISO Breathing. ISO Breathing, I'm located um, online at www.isobreathing.com. I can be emailed at ellen at isobreathing.com. To learn a little bit more about the program, a lot of information on the website, but again, if you go to YouTube, so www.youtube.com, and when you get there, look up ISO Breathing. I have about 38 snippets on there, <laughs> and it's all there. I also put out a monthly newsletter, so I do have an exercise of the month. There is a recipe of the month, Excellent. and I'm going to give that to you right now because I made it today, and it is fantastic. Oh. It's um, very simple. It's mango. Okay. Avocado, tomato, and a little bit of onion. Wow. Chopped up. Uh, I squeeze two lime. If you use one large avocado, one large mango, uh, two romaine, uh, what is it, Roman? Toma Roma tom tomatoes. Yeah, Roman, thank you. Roma tomatoes. <laughs> and squeeze two limes, mix it all together, refrigerate it, half a cup serving. It's excellent. Wow. Cold and refreshing, and it's healthy. Well, hey, you got... You, you just got next month's recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. In this heat, we need something that's cool and delicious. And I always have guest writers okay. on. Uh, I've got a great uh, di registered dietitian that I work with, so every so often she'll give us lots of wonderful hints. I have a local chef that I work with, so he also adds in. He's more on the gluten-free side, so he'll mm -hmm. add in gluten-free recipes. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you for joining me today, Ellen. I appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I'm very excited about what you're doing. And uh, if you want to learn more about Ellen, please go to the website at www kimdialogues.com and you'll see her beautiful picture. Just click on that and it'll take you straight to her website. I thank you for tuning in today and again let's go back to today's Kimism. The only thing you have to do in life is inhale and exhale. Everything else is a benefit of living. So please live, have fun, be blessed, encouraged, and empowered and I'll see you next time right here on Kim Dialogues with Kim. I'm signing off saying have a blessed day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. I appreciate it. Okay.